So hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to tie Polish woman fly, Polish woman nymph. Uh, it's quite famous fly. Uh, this is variation obviously, uh, as there are many out there. So let's talk about materials first before everything. I'm using the caddis type of hook. You can use any kind of curved hook or even jig hook. It doesn't matter, but this is more traditional way to tie it. Tungsten bead is uh, 3mm, 3.5mm now, uh, hook is size 12, so quite large. Uh, I'm using embroidery threads in brown and yellow color. And I'm just, because this is, uh, this consists of six strands, I'm using just two. If I want to make more neat fly with the smaller knots over here, I would use just one strand, but it it would actually almost double the tying of the fly and it's not so important. I would do it when I would uh, tie smaller flies or if I would tie uh, dry flies. So that's the body material. Under body, uh, I'm using Polyfloss by T Extreme, uh, 40 denier. Color is not important, but it's cream. Uh, I'm going to change the thread after I finish everything and finish off the fly with uh, Semperfly Nano Silk in uh, 50 denier. Again, color is completely not important. Uh, so that's it. Uh, let's just get into tying. So I will start a uh, fly with uh, Polyfloss Small by the Extreme. It's 40 denier. Uh, color is completely irrelevant in this case, but it's cream. Uh, this way you will see better about thread control and about catching materials and other stuff. So I'm gonna just start with the reverse jam hitch. Uh, whenever you want to start uh, catching your materials near the hook eye, uh, it's probably better to start with this way, the reverse jam hitch than with the uh, normal uh, starting that you, you're probably used to. So I'm gonna just transfer this tag and secure it over here with a couple of wraps. Now I can just proceed to thread control without pressure, pulling towards me. Now you can see it here, without pressure, it doesn't rotate around the hook and then pulling upward so it doesn't rotate. So no pressure, pull. No pressure, pull. So you just don't uh, struggle uh, with the materials rotating around your hook. It's one less thing to do in your in in in, rea in uh, what we do here. Now, usually when you're viewing those flies, um, you should pay attention which strand goes which side of the hook. Um, you don't need to pay attention to that. So I'm just going to catch the brown one. So I'm going to counter spin my bobbin holder and I'm just going to catch this piece of thread over here by the very tip. Two thread, two wraps and then I'm just going to reverse everything. Let me just do it. So again, I'm going to counter spin the bobbin so the thread jumps into my hand, pull it almost to the end, pull upwards and then let's go. Pull up, pull up. Now, as you can see here, the thread is twisted. So what I will do is I'll go back almost till the end and flatten the thread. And as you can see here, the thread gets wider which is a sign that thread got flat. Now I'm going to uh, keep each strand on the side of the hook so I know where they belong. So I'm just pulling back with my left hand and then going down the hook band as much as you prefer. Try to keep those strands secured and then just I'm gonna check if I want it a little bit more or not and that's it. With flat thread continue creating the taper. 
whenever the thread gets corded just unspin it with the counter uh, spinning the bobbin holder and that's okay now it's frayed here for some reason but that's again not too much of a concern whenever you see the thread is getting thinner just uh, counter spin the bobbin and then go a little bit less so don't, don't don't go till the end that's how you create the taper and then again you can see that it's almost it's it's around here and it's like almost around here so i need to counter spin the bobbin let me make the contrasting color here like look what happens it's going to get wider now all the way down so i'm gonna go again now because you're using a little bit thicker thread here you don't need to uh, to build up too big of a taper I'm just gonna try to fix the speed by sliding the, the, the thread underneath okay okay as you can see, I, I like to keep this slot on the bottom side of the hook. Okay. Counter spin. With counter spinning, I'm, I'm gonna finish here. So, what finish? What finish is here just so everything it doesn't unravel. Now I'm gonna start everything. Okay, let me show you one neat trick. So you don't want to have this tag. Pull on your thread and use your scissor blade to cut very near. So I'm pulling on the thread hand. I'm not using scissors. Blade is fixed in position. Now, as you can see, there is no tag end anywhere. So what happens by pulling the thread tension and creating everything like very very uh, under under higher tension yeah uh, and cutting the thread will actually jump under the whip finish knot so you won't be able to see it now let's jump it into tying which is quite interesting and fun to do uh, I'm gonna go back and forth with my camera so you can see better what I'm doing here first I will do test knots so I'll go just go spread a little bit so I know where to go now I'm making the overhead knot with the yellow strand going in front of the brown and then I'm going to go like I'm going backwards with yellow strand and then I'm gonna just create a loop with brown and slide it over the hook now let's see what happens I'll pull backwards and then again you lead yellow strand on the top of the brown one and then I'm gonna show you with Botkin so go with this and then go from behind through the loop I'll show it uh, with the camera a little bit further away just let me start the fly a little bit better so again create this loop and slide the brown on the top and what happens you're going to create a two colored body with lighter color on the bottom and a darker one on the top not all insects are having this but actually having a contrasting color may even improve your catch rate that's what I've heard from I think Lance Egan in some of his videos which was like quite interesting to hear uh, so why not like the man is very good fisherman so he knows what he's talking about so just go like so now I'm gonna go with my camera a little bit further away now what I forgot to mention is that you can alter what you actually do so you don't have to go with the yellow on the top and going from behind you can actually alter uh, this 
so I can do the opposite thing for like two times and then I'm just just gonna create some patterns over the flies body but I don't think think it, it will actually improve anything about catch rate uh, it's just gonna make your fly a little bit different so that's the only th benefit you will get uh, these flies are quite amazing uh, to work with to fish with and I really enjoy tying those uh, also if I'm using two strands here obviously uh, but if you use one strand it will take like almost double the time because you will have almost double the knots to, to create here so but the fly will look, look neater and these knots on the side will actually uh, be much smaller obviously and uh, it, it, it's good for dry flies dry flies if you tie, tie dry flies like just do it with thinner thread uh, so now where you can see it I just started it here of course uh, the yellow one goes in front of the brown one you can see it like I'm going in front of it and then I'm gonna go behind and through the through the loop here under the hook with yellow one and that makes one overhead knot now what I do I push the brown one and it creates a little loop which I just slide onto the hook now before you tighten everything up go I'm gonna just slide it so you can see better go slightly backwards so you actually push the this knot onto the previous one and you get the tighter tighter weave and then you can also uh, adjust the width of dark or yellow segment by adjusting the angle of everything here so if your angle is narrow this yellow stripe on the bottom will be narrow if you go wide it's going to be wide so I'm gonna just do it let's say 50% 50% or 40 60 so again yellow goes always in front of the brown one and then through the loop and then the opposite loop now this was yet the yellow and when you tighten everything you go create brown loop and slide it over the hook and then repeat the process until you uh, reach the the tungsten bead now it's very good if you have rotational vise because it will actually make things easier for you okay tighten everything okay because I'm rotating this too many times those knots are not perfectly aligned so I'm just going to loosen them up a little bit and then repeat the process so yellow in front of the brown and then brown makes a loop it would be cool if I could make a song rhyme so you guys would remember this but to be honest I'm also uh, whenever I'm uh, starting tying those above and fly flies I test it first but actually you don't need to pay attention whether the yellow is going to be here or from the other side of the hook you just go and uh, switch which strand goes first so in my case I usually go with darker one making the loop and then the lighter one makes the second loop but the, this time I just put everything the opposite way so I have to go with the lighter to create this big overhand knot and then I'm using brown one, darker one in this case, uh, to create the loop. So as you can see, it's like quite easy thing to do. Uh, creates perfect body. Now let's get and see the close up. Now I'm going to attach another thread. In this case, it's a nano silk bar by Semperfly. It's 12 odd or what is this? Uh, 50 denier. Uh, I took this the thicker one because I can create I can split the thread, so I can actually create thorax by splitting the splitting the thread. 
Now, the way to cut GSP is just slice through it, obviously. Now, what I like to do is I, I like to tighten the knot again, just in case it's uh, it something happened to it while I was reattaching everything. And then I'll just go with my bobbin around the hook, make one turn. Uh, difficult to do with camera in front. Okay, now I can. Now, when I have full revolution, I can actually change hands. And just take a couple more wraps here and tighten everything down. Now, I'm just gonna show you with non serrated again. So, when you cut your thread very close, you'd use non serrated blade or your scissors. So, I'm just gonna pull out the yellow strand. So, the same what I was doing with the finish knot. I'm doing here. So just go with your scissors there. Okay. Unruly. But never mind, it's better. Okay, again, non serrated. I'm gonna take it close and get just cut it. Or you can just use some kind of a blade and do it okay just let me cut this fray part okay I'm just gonna cover up everything here I'm gonna flatten the thread so when you flatten the thread you want to take some dubbing and insert inside for the dubbing I'm using the mixture of Hair's mask and some UV dubbings. So this one, uh, I, I'm going to use it because it matches the color more or less, and it has those guard hairs which are, in this case, desirable. I'm using Botkin, you can see it's flattened nicely. While I was waiting, it's easy to split now. Now do. Okay, I'm gonna remove this. So what I like to do is I'm just gonna insert it like so. And I may need a little bit more here. So I'm not using dubbing uh, dubbing wax as you can see, I'm just like put putting literally putting it on the on the thread and, and putting those two strands together. And then you just spin your bobbin, bobbin holder, and then Keep everything by 90 degrees so it doesn't open if this loop opens you may lose your dubbing and then go back and forth with your finger and then just help it a little bit here what I like to do is I like to those loose uh, hairs I like to take them away okay and now Let's just create the thorax. I'm just pulling back, stroking back all of those so I can just create nice whip finish now. Okay. I'm flattening the thread again with GSP as I said before in some videos not so important to flatten the thread because it's not gonna break but with standard threads which are much uh, less strong than this you may want to to flatten the thread so the knot sits better okay now Jen again pull your thread not the scissors and this is your finished fly polish fly uh, which is quite cool pattern to have so I just decided to show you on the photo but then why not the the, the video as well uh, how to do the same but with just one strand from each color and I'll just show you what effect 
we're going to get. So I'm using the same technique obviously, but the effect is different again. I mean, as you can see here, those knots on the side are much smaller. I mean, probably, I mean, I'm using just one instead of two, but it seems that it's uh, not just double the size uh, decreased. It just, it looks much, much smaller. So look how neat these knots look with the end result of uh, one strand each being like this. Super neat, super nice. Now you can choose to, to fish with this fly uh, with a rig of one fly obviously or more traditionally with two or even three flies which I personally don't like. I prefer to use just one fly because I have much more control over the fly's behavior under the water because if you have two flies or even three flies which is the worst scenario those flies that are on the droppers uh, are going to be higher in the water column obviously usually and up there currents may be different so obviously those flies will uh, react differently and they may even create some tension on the in the system and they may pull your uh, bottom fly away so everything may be a little bit just different there is time for two or three flies but usually what I like to do in most most cases is just one fly uh, so you can just fish a dead drift that's the first thing you should try always try dead drift unless you're seeing uh, the fish behavior that's like pretty aggressive but they're not smashing it like directly on the surface so if you see fish um, smashing under the surface making like literally the u-turn below the surface it means they're eating caddis pupa so you may try this one or even something lighter so what happens is like you cast it upstream let it sink down and then when it's a little bit downstream from you you just stop everything stop your rod and let the water push the tippet and as a consequence the fly will go up and that imitates pupa uh, going to emerge and transform on the surface and the takes are actually quite vicious because literally trout is uh, killing those flies like they're like very aggressive uh, so guys i hope this video was uh, helpful for you interesting uh, i hope to see you next saturday and until next saturday uh, tight lines and cheers